Amen. Greetings once again in the matchless name, the mighty name, the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, thank God for this opportunity once again uh, for us to come and listen to the Word of God um, this evening. And uh, I want to take this time to greet and welcome each and every one of you from wherever you are tuning in from. Um, to those of you who are tuning in from Fiji, very good morning to you. Um, and I do believe that you are celebrating Christmas Day in Fiji today. And um, I want to thank you for giving your time to sit down and just to listen to the Word of God this morning. And I believe that it will truly bless your heart um, as you prepare for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Ni sakinda pa kiti ko na turangan na marama na bimata pa vale. Di ba rong ating may na puno di ba rong ating may kina may biti. At na bimono ato mga hindi ba rong ating may kina. Kung ba ito ni sa matakat ni kunisin ni su na matakat ni kuwa. Ni sa manggo sa tiyo ko na babakaraw tiyo ko at na marote kiti ko. Kaya pa kanunumi tiyo ko na sinin ni su du. Ni ngunit turang at si su karisto. Lebu na bayi talo noa, tahu riti ko yang lawa bagi riti ko yang nado berburu-buru nang guna di kuah, di sengat tu ni pola yang naik balat tambo naik keros nang pulik kali mana singa, di weekend dah, dah sengat sejar ni biak kawit tak, kangen tak kila ni ame isu nang guna tu orang macam isu, you know the date is not as important as the the actual event, the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. People don't believe, or they say that it's not according to the Bible, it's not written in the Bible. Uh, the 25th of December, you know, uh, but that is not as important as knowing the fact that the Son of God was born into this in this world as as a child, as a son, according to what the prophet says. And um, if we are that prompt to um, celebrate our own birthdays, then why not we celebrate the birthday of the one who gave his life for each and every one of us? And I want to thank you for giving your time. I want to thank you for uh, being able to sit down and listen to the Word of God. I won't take much of your time this morning, but I want to greet you first and foremost and welcome you in the matchless name, the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you once again for tuning in. Thank you for giving your time. And we pray that the Lord will richly bless you as we listen to the Word of God together. For those of you uh, who are tuning in here, uh, from here in the United Kingdom, um, or maybe other parts of the world, um, we welcome you as well this evening or this morning or maybe um, uh, wherever you may be tuning in from its different timings, we welcome you according to the time zone that you live in, in the matchless name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I do thank you for giving your time as well to be part of this. This is just a word of encouragement to each and every one of us um, as we are approaching the... The, the, uh, the Christmas Day, where we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, will you please close your eyes and bow your heads and let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you. We praise you, we exalt you, we magnify your name, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for the privilege that you have given us to be alive once again, to come and worship you and exalt you, and most importantly, to hear what you have to say to us. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We acknowledge your presence here with us. Thank you, Jesus, for sending the Holy Spirit. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here with us this afternoon or this morning. We praise you. We exalt you. We adore you. We love you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for choosing to be with us. We acknowledge your presence. Thank you for constantly leading us, guiding us, and teaching us the things that we should know and understand. And most importantly, how we should live our lives and in, the, in this dark world that we are living in, in these last days, we are, we are believing for the time that the Son of God will come and take us home. And so we are here ready to be taught your word once again this morning. Lord, I pray that you will bless each and every one of our viewers, wherever they may be tuning in from. I pray that you will bless each and every one of them, for they have given that time, Lord. Set aside this time to sit down and listen to you. Lord, I pray that you will bless them mightily, bless them indeed. Bless their wives, their children, their husbands, their families, teenagers, boys and girls. Bless them, Lord, as, they, as we listen to your word together this morning. Lord, I praise you and I thank you. 
If there are things that we have done that contradicts your word, we ask you, Holy Spirit, forgive us and cleanse us with the precious blood of our Lord Jesus Christ this morning. We thank you for the privilege of being alive once again, not only to come and enjoy the blessings, but also to come and be taught your word so that we know what to do, how to live in this world in preparation for the coming of our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you for this moment. Holy Spirit, we commit everything into your hands. Speak to us, your mind, your heart, tonight, uh, this morning. We thank you and we praise you as for me, your servant. May I decrease in you, increase as always. Bless your word and bless the hearers. We ask all these things in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. I'm going to preach to you on a title, on a topic. Uh, make room for Jesus and receive him in your heart today. Make room for Jesus and receive him in your heart today. It's really, really important, beloved. It's really important to understand that you need to make room for Jesus and receive him in your heart today. I know we are in this festive season. Um, we can be so caught up into the things that we think that we should do. But I want to encourage you, out of all the things that you are going to do today, please always remember this, that you need to make room for Jesus and receive him in your heart today. If you have never or haven't given your life to Jesus, Maybe today is the best day for you as we remember the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, as we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Make him room and, and, and receive him in your heart today. I want to take you to the book of Luke chapter 2 verse 7. Luke chapter 2 verse 7. I just want to pick out verse 7. Uh, this is what the Bible says, New King James Version. And she brought forth their, her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Beloved, clearly it says in there that there was no room. There was no room for them. No room for the Son of God. No room for the Savior. No room for the one that will give his life for us, no room for the Son of God. And I, I, can, I can just focus back and think back to that day. If the innkeeper, the owner of that inn, if he knew that this will be the Son of God that will take away the sins of the world, he would have removed all his guests and give him the whole house, give them the whole house. But this, this is what happened. They say there is no room here. However, we have another room beside the inn. It's a manger. You can use that if you want. In here, no room. Okay? That's what I said. If, if the innkeeper, the owner of that guest house, know who that was, who was asking for a room, he would give him the whole house. But because of ignorance, maybe, yes, we can go with that. Oh, he doesn't know that it is the Son of God. But this is the thing. If they know, if they know what the prophets had said, if they spend time referring back to what the prophets had said, they would know that it is that time when the Son of God will be born of a virgin, Mary. And they would have prepared for it. But because they did not believe what the prophets had said, because they doubt what the prophets had said, that's why they did not pay so much attention to the coming of the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why they were told there was no room in the inn, but there is a manger. This is how we people act in the time that we are living in. We Christians, I will say Christians, most importantly, because we think that we can just, it's, it's okay just to go into the church. It's okay just to be part of a denomination. It's okay just to be religious. It's okay. It's not as important. You know, knowing Jesus as in that level is okay. We don't really need to invite him into our heart. You know, sometimes we want Jesus to be beside us. Yes, the inn is there, but beside the inn was the manger. They said, there's no room here. However, there's room on the side. If you want to use it, you're more than welcome to do so. And that's sometimes how we re react to Jesus when he's calling us, when the Holy Spirit is convicting us 
to give our life to Jesus. Yes, we can say, Lord, I'm willing to go to church, but I'm not willing to let you into my heart to change my life, to be my Lord and be my Savior. Yes, I can go and, and, and listen to the sermon. Yes, I can go and listen to Bible studies. Yes, I can learn how to sing. Yes, I can learn how to praise you. But don't tell me to welcome you into my heart. You can be beside me just in case I need you, then I can call on you. You can be beside me, you can be on my right or you can be on my left. As long as you are beside me, then that's okay. But Jesus doesn't want to be just on by your side. He wants to live inside of you. Amen. This is the worst mistake that we Christians are doing nowadays. As long as we are going to church, that's it. As long as we know how to sing, that's it. As long as we are part of the choir, that's it. As long as we can recite Bible verses, that's it. It's not okay, beloved. That's not only it. That's not what God wants for you. He wants Jesus to live in you. Jesus himself wants to live in you. That's why it's important for you in this Christmas, make room for the Savior and receive him. That's the first instance. The innkeeper, they said, yes, you can in this vicinity, but not in this inn, but on the side in the manger. Okay, please don't be like them. Yes, they might have done that with ignorance because of ignorance, but we Christians nowadays, we are not ignorant like them. We now know who Jesus is. We now know what he can do. We now know what the Bible says that he said one day he will come back. We know that. So why don't we just let him in? Why don't we just make room for him? It's important for you to make room for Jesus. Jesus doesn't want to be your spare tire. Just when you needed help, then he will hop in. Just when we needed finances, then he will hop in. Just when we are sick and our body needed healing, then he will come in. No, no, beloved. He wants to be the Lord of your life. He is your savior. He wants to be the Lord of your life. He wants to take control of your life. And you've got the key. You've got to welcome him into your heart. Don't be like that innkeeper. Yes, he is ignorance, but we are not. We know who Jesus is right now. We know what he can do. We know the miracles that he had performed, calling Lazarus out from the grave. That's the Jesus that we are celebrating his birthday. And we need to make room for him. Even in your busy schedule, I, I believe there is still a space for Jesus in your heart. And let him come in and take control of your life. Make room for Jesus and receive him in your heart today. The first instance was the innkeeper who said, there's no room here. However, on the side, yes. And I want to take you to another instance of the life of Jesus. In Luke chapter 24, beginning from verse 23, 28 to 31, I want to read to you just on that passage of scripture. We know the whole story of Luke 24. It is the story of the road to Emmaus when Jesus joined these two men, one called Cleopatras and the other one is unknown. But we know that they are part of the disciples. So the whole story of Luke chapter 24 was based on that. But I want to bring to you just on verse 28 and 31. Listen to what the Bible says. Luke 24. It says, then they draw near to the village where they were going and he indicated that he would go that he would have gone further. So Jesus joined them on the way. They didn't even realize or recognize who the man was when they were talking together. And as they were reaching the village that they will, gone to, they, they will be going to, Jesus moved further forward and indicated to them that he is going to go further. Verse 29, but they constrained him they constrained him saying, abide with us. Now this is the difference between the innkeeper and the two men. Because the two men, they constrain Jesus. In other words, they, they grab his hand or they grab his cloak and said to him, you are not going to go past us. You are not going to go past this village. We will take you home. Please come with us. Even if Jesus wants to say no, because they constrained him, that shows that they are desperate to take him home. Now, some of us right now, we are in a desperate situation. 
And I want to assure you, if only you can take Jesus home with you, if only you can invite him, if only you can make him room. Clearly, when they constrain him to stay, for him to stay with them, that means there is room in their house for them, for Jesus. And it says, but they constrained him saying, abide with us, for it is towards evening and the day is fast spent. And he went in to stay with them. First instance, no room in the inn. Second instance, they said, abide with us. And what did Jesus do? He went in to stay with them. Now, that's the kind of God that we serve. He doesn't care how messy your house is. He doesn't care how messy your life is. As long as you welcome him into your heart, as long as you welcome him into your house, as long as you make room for him, God, the Son of God, will make things right for you, your life first, and your family later on. He has the power to change your life around. Remember what he did to Zacchaeus. On his way to the cross, he went through Jericho, the cursed city. And then he said to Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, come down, make haste and come down, for I have to be in your house today. He didn't say we will conduct a Bible study at your house. He says, I have to be in your house. And Zacchaeus make haste and hurry came down, came down, rushed down and took Jesus home. And what happens? Things started to change. Zacchaeus begins to own up, which means changes started from him. And then Jesus said, Jesus said, salvation has come into this house today. When you invite Jesus to come into your life, salvation is coming to you. Love is coming to you. Grace is coming to you. Goodness is coming to you. The kindness of God is coming to you. The things that you will never receive from other people, you will only receive from Jesus. People will turn their backs on you. Jesus will never do that. He says, but they constrained him saying, abide with us for it is towards evening and the day is far spent. And he went in and stayed with them. Verse 30, now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Verse 31, then their eyes were opened, and they knew him. Two things were opened, beloved. Their eyes were opened, and what Paul says, enlightened the eyes of my understanding. So not only their physical eyes were opened, but their spiritual eyes were also opened. It says, then their eyes were opened and they knew. You see, some of the stuff that we are doing right now, it feels normal to us. But to other people, it's not normal. normal to be normal. Then your eyes will be opened and then your understanding, you will know Jesus. You will know the goodness of our God. Now, you don't know that. That's why it's important for you to invite Jesus and make room. Receive him today. Don't just enjoy this festive season, beloved. Don't just party and enjoy life. Receive the life giver. Receive the one who says that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Make room for him. Take him home with you. Receive him in your heart today. It is really important. Now that is the second instance. The first instance, the innkeeper says, no room. However, manger beside the inn is free you can go there second instance these two great men of God they constrained him to take him home with them and what happens two things number one their eyes physical eyes were open then they can see Jesus number two their the, the eyes of their understanding were enlightened and they knew they knew him and that is exactly what will happen to you when you constrain Jesus, you invite Jesus to come into your heart. But this is the third instance is the saddest part of it. 
the saddest part of all. Because in the book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. No longer given a space on the side like the innkeeper and the manger. No longer constrained to be taken home like these two men and Zacchaeus. This time, Jesus is right outside the door and he's asking to come in. The two disciples on the road to Emmaus constrained him by force. They took him. You are coming with us. But now, in the last instance of Jesus, he is not welcomed anymore. He is not constrained anymore to be taken into the house. He's kicked out of the house and he's standing at the house, dying to come in. He wants to come in. He's knocking at the door and says, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, make room and invite him. Receive him in your heart today. I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Talks about fellowship. Jesus, in this festive season, wants to fellowship with you. But you've got to make a room and you've got to receive him into your heart. He wants to make a room. He wants to come in, beloved, but you've got to make the room. You've got to be willing to open up your heart. You've got to be willing to constrain him, to let him come in. Don't let him stand outside the door and knock, please. It's really important. It's really important for us believers. Christians, I would say Christians, make room for Jesus and receive him in your heart today. I want to take you to John chapter 14, verse 1 and 6. In verse 1 it says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Now this is the Jesus that we talk about here. In my Father's house are many mansions. Another translation says, I more, have more than enough room. In my Father's house, it has more than enough room. More than enough room. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. What does that talk about? What does Jesus meant when he said this? He said, I want to have fellowship with you. I want us to fellowship together so that where I am, you may be also. That's why it's important for you and I to open the door when he's knocking. He says, I will come in, dine with him and he with me, meaning fellowship. In this festive season, we prefer to dine with our loved ones, which is good. I'm not saying it's bad. It's good. But how about having that fellowship with Jesus Christ? Personal fellowship with Jesus. In the midst of all the hustling and bustling that we will be enjoying this Christmas, Please make room for Jesus. Receive him into your heart. He wants to have fellowship with you. And it says, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Talks about fellowship. Verse 4, and where I go, you know, and the way, you know. Verse 5, Thomas, doubting Thomas, said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, I want to remind you with those words, no one, no one comes to the Father except through me. Now the reason why it's important for you to make room for him and receive him now is because of this. He says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. Now you are given the privilege, the chance to receive him to yourself. You are given the chance to make room for him. Remember, he has already said it, in my father's house there's more than enough room. In other words, Jesus Christ will only come for those who make room for him. Jesus Christ will only receive those who receive him. 
If you reject him, he will reject you. If you receive him, he will receive you. Now listen to this, beloved. Not everybody that goes to church will be received by Jesus. Only those who received him into their hearts. You can go to church all your life, but deny Jesus all your life. You can go to church all your life, but reject Jesus all your life. You can go to church all your life, but refuse Jesus all your life. Jesus will never come for those who reject, refuse him. He will only come for those who receive him. So if you want to be part of that number, when the saints are marching in, then you need to receive Jesus now. Make room for him now. This is the best time to make room for Jesus. This is the best time to give your life to Jesus. Make room for him, beloved, because he is making room for you as we speak. And when you receive him, he will come and he will receive you according to what he says in John, John 14. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. The importance of having that fellowship here is that you will have fellowship with him there. And then he said the, most re the three most important things that people are searching for. People are searching for the way. People are searching for the truth. And people are searching for life. And Jesus says, when you receive me, you receive the whole package. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And then he says, no one comes to the Father except through me. No one comes to the Father except through me. No one, beloved, no one. You see, in the book of Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6, this is what the Bible says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Now, I just want to bring to you one of his name mentioned in Isaiah 9 verse 6, and that is the Prince of Peace. If I have to add on to what Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, the life, and the Prince of Peace. Okay? If I have to add it personally, I would include that word in there. In John 14, 16, where he says to Thomas, I am the way, the truth, the life, and the Prince of Peace. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, I want to say something that I know I will be hated by saying this. But I have to say it. If you want to have that life with Jesus when you, fit, when you leave this world, then you must receive Jesus now. There's no other way. There's no other way. In heaven, to God, there's only one way. Jesus is the only way. You've got to receive Jesus in your heart. There is no other way in this universe. There is no other way. Jesus is the only way. And listen to what he says. No one comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus is the only way. This is one thing that really hurts me most of the time. When one of our loved ones leave this world, called by God, or God took his life away from us, we always mention these words, rest in peace. And sometimes, I don't know, maybe we are too lazy to write the whole thing, we just write down R.I.P. Knowing that there is no relationship with Jesus, with that person that died, and yet we say, rest in peace, it's like an insult to the family. It's like an insult to the, to the person that has left us. Because we clearly know what the Bible says. Not everybody that says to me, Lord, Lord, but he that doeth the will of him who sent me the will of my Father who sent me. Only those who live according to the Word of God, only those who have a close, intimate relationship with Jesus, they are the ones whom we can boldly say, rest in peace, because they have the Prince of Peace. We cannot deny, reject, refuse the Prince of Peace and expect 
to rest in peace. When we say rest in peace or RIP, I just want to give you this information so that you know. You know, sometimes people put RIP, meaning rest in peace. But there are other meanings as well to that. And while I was preparing this, this just came into my heart. If there is no close relationship with Jesus, if people don't make room for Jesus, since we know that there is no other way, Jesus is the only way. If people don't make room for Jesus, if people don't receive Jesus into their heart, that RIP, meaning rest in peace, there's another meaning to it, which says, roast in pain. The Bible clearly says that there will be tormenting, that there will be sulfur, that there will be pain in hell. So be very careful. The next time you want to write down the word RIP, it can be rest in peace if, there's a, if that person have a close relationship with Jesus, or it can be roast in pain if the person have no relationship whatsoever with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We need to get that straight and we need to get it straight now. Don't just say RIP to anyone who passes away. Because if, we, if they don't have a close relationship with Jesus, the Prince of Peace, then there is no rest in peace. That RIP will mean roast in pain. Because in hell, it's a place of pain. It's a place of torment. It's a place of fire. There's no peace in hell. No peace in hell. So we've got to make the choice today. Don't just celebrate Christmas for the sake of having a party, drinking party. Do whatever you please that is contradicting to the word of God. Remember the one whom you are celebrating his birthday. He wouldn't want you to celebrate his birthday that way. If there is a way that he wants you to celebrate his birthday, is to make room for him, open up your heart and receive him. Because he said, I'm going to make room for you and I will come back to receive you to myself. Since he's coming back to receive you to himself, now it's your time to receive him to yourself. Give him a chance to change your life. Your eyes will be opened. Your thinking will be opened. Your mind will be enlightened. The eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. Then you will begin to see the things that was normal to you once is really abnormal now since your eyes have opened. But it's important that you make room for him now and receive him in your heart today. Jesus said this in Matthew 10, but whoever denies me, before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. I want to read to you two Bible verses because there's one word that is used in these two Bible verses. Bible verse number one, Matthew 10, 33. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Listen to that. Second Bible verse, 2 Timothy 2, 12. If we suffer... We shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. I want to bring to you the word deny in, in, in Greek. The word deny in Greek is aniomai. Aniomai means to reject, to refuse, and not to accept something offered. Deny in Greek is aniomai. And the meaning of the word animai is to reject, number one, to refuse, number two, and number three, and not to accept something offered. For unto us, Isaiah says, a child is born, a son is born, unto us a son is given. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. A son is offered to each and every one. A son is offered to you, beloved. Please don't deny him, meaning to reject, to refuse, and not to accept something offered, meaning you don't have to pay for.
for it. You just have to receive something that is offered to you. So Jesus said in te Matthew 10, 33, but whoever denies me, in other words, if we input the word, the Greek word there, whoever anomies me before men, him I will also anomie before my Father who is in heaven. So if we put the, the meaning, but whoever reject, refuse, and not accept this gift that is offered to him, him also will I reject, refuse, and not accept before my Father who is in heaven. You see the importance of that tiny little word, deny. Please don't deny him. Don't refuse, don't reject the things that is offered to you free of charge. You just have to make room and welcome him into your heart. Receive him because one day he's coming back to receive you. And 2 Timothy 2.12, if we suffer, we also will reign with him. If we anomie him, if we reject, refuse, or not accept him, then he also will anomie us, will reject, refuse, and not accept us when it, com when it comes into his kingdom. And one word Paul used in, Timothy's, in, in his letter to Timothy, he says, if we suffer, the word suffer in Greek is hapomino. Hypomino means to abide under misfortunes and trials and to hold fast to our faith in Christ. So this is what Paul is saying to Timothy. If we abide under misfortune and trials to hold fast to our faith in Christ, we shall also reign with him when he come into his kingdom. And this is the secret that the the, the prisoner that was hung on the cross with him knew. He said, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, today, today you sh shall be with me in paradise. Make room at the very last moment on the cross. Doesn't need baptism. Just from the cross to paradise. Just like that. Why? Make room and receive Jesus. Make room and receive Jesus. Hypomeno, to abide under misfortunes and trials to hold fast to our faith in Jesus Christ. Beloved, make room for Jesus Christ. In this festive season, always remember it is important for you to make room for Jesus and receive him in your heart today. Not everybody that goes to church will end up in heaven. Only those who receive the Prince of Peace. If you want peace, when you leave this world, receive the Prince of Peace while, I, while you are still alive. Then you will rest in peace. Otherwise, unfortunately, I have to say this, you will be roasting in pain if you reject, refuse, and not accept something that is offered. And in this case, Isaiah says, for unto us a child is born and a son is given. A son is given. All that you need to do, receive him into your heart. Make room and receive him into your heart. Will you please close your eyes and bow your heads. I want to pray for you. If you haven't prayed, if you haven't given your life to Jesus, before you enjoy your lunch with your families, with your loved ones, wherever you are listening in or tuning in from, please, just close your eyes and bow your heads and just repeat this prayer of repentance. The Bible says if we confess, if we believe in our heart and confess with our mouth, Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and we will be saved. And that's all that we need this morning. Will you please close your eyes, bow your heads, and just repeat this simple prayer of repentance with me. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for your word that you have shared with me this morning. I now believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that you are the Son of God. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to forgive me of all my sin. I confess that I am a sinner 
and I need a Savior. On this Christmas day, I give my life to you, Jesus. I welcome you into my heart to be my Lord and be my Savior. I receive you, dear Lord Jesus, into my heart. I give my life to you. I am yours from today onwards. I thank you that one day you will come and receive me into your kingdom. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for the privilege that you have given me to make things right with you. I praise you. I receive you. I adore you. I love you. And I thank you. In your name I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Beloved, if you have prayed with a sincere heart, asking God for forgiveness, according to what the Bible says, He will forgive you. He will set you free. And He is preparing a place for you, according to what He says. And one day He will come back to take you. Will you please close your eyes and bow your heads. Father, we praise you. We thank you. We exalt you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for speaking your mind and your heart to us. And we know that it's, there's, there is no point beating around the bush. With you, you always deliver your message just as you meant it to be. And Lord, I thank you that I can be used as your servant to make that happen, to deliver your message according to how you want it to be delivered. And I praise you and I thank you. I praise you, Lord, for, I thank you also for all those people that have given their time, brothers and sisters, families, friends, loved ones who have given their time to tune in at this moment. Lord, I pray that you will bless them mightily. To those who have recommitted their lives to you, those who have given their life to you, Jesus, I pray that you will bless them and empower them to walk in a holy life according to your word. Holy Spirit, I commit their lives into your hands. Lead them and guide them and empower them and strengthen them so that they can live a holy life before they will be taken to live with you forever. Lord, I thank you and I praise you for this moment. Thank you for forgiving us of all our sins and cleansing us with, all, with the blood of Jesus Christ from all unrighteousness. Father, we commit our lives into your hand as they celebrate your birthday. Dear Lord Jesus, I pray that you will protect them and guide them. I apply the blood of Jesus on each and every one of them. May Amen. Amen. Thank you once again, brothers and sisters, for tuning in. Um, that's it from us, and we will see you again next year, 2022, our first sermon next year in 2022. Thank you once again. For this time, thank you for giving your time to tune in and join in with us. Wherever you may be tuning in, wherever you are tuning in from, Merry Christmas and a blessed and a prosperous New Year. Please make room for Jesus and stay with Jesus. One day He will come and take you. Remember, He's not going to come and take everybody that goes to church, everybody that knows the Bible, everybody that knows how to pray or how to sing. He will only take those who have welcomed Him into their hearts for Him to be their Lord and their Savior. That's about it. Amen. Thank you once again. It's my prayer that the Lord will richly bless each and every one of you this morning.